It's really important to think about survivorship in addition to the, the therapies that we use for treating prostate cancer because men are more than what you see each day on a clinic visit. If we don't understand what they're experiencing, we're not going to be able to make anything better. I wanted to be a doctor since I was really little, um, and I think that that's just because I had family members who had cancer, and I needed to understand the interactions that they had with their doctors so that they could make themselves feel better and empower themselves to take action against their illnesses. My personal connection to prostate cancer is my grandfather. He went through multiple different treatments, uh, including hormonal therapy for what ended up being metastatic disease, and ultimately, over time, passed away, actually, just about a year ago from prostate cancer. I want to know what's going on in the day-to-day -day lives of the men that I treat with prostate cancer, not just how, how long they're living. I want to know how they feel. I want to know how they think. I want to know how they sleep. And I want us to understand the biology behind that. After treatment for prostate cancer, there are a lot of different complications that we think about when we think about survivorship. These can be things like the way that they urinate or have bowel movements or have erections after things like surgery or radiation, but they can also include things like hot flashes, sleep changes, uh, issues with erectile dysfunction or libido, and even things like depression or anxiety that come with treatments that we use like hormonal therapies for prostate cancer. All of these different aspects of survivorship are really important and affect the day-to-day -day lives of the men living with this disease. And the Prostate Cancer Foundation took a risk on me, and I hope every day that I can uh, pay back that risk with some great data and ways that we can move the field forward for men with prostate cancer.